For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini, researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna, joins me to discuss democracy. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Why do you think it is necessary in your column to debate what we see as democratic life? Well, I think very many people will be asking what we mean by democratic life today after Parliament yesterday heard a report from the Minister of Police which um, said that the President doesn't have to pay anything and for Nkandla and ignored the report of the um, uh, public protector. I think people find, have a sense of helplessness. They have a sense that they have voted for representatives and they voted for them under a constitution which requires that parliamentarians hold the executive accountable. Now this thing of a swimming pool uh, being necessary to put out fires at Nkandla, I mean, it's actually an insult to people's intelligence. And I think it makes people wonder, what do we need to empower ourselves? We wanted the vote, and the vote is very important. People wanted the vote because the vote is a way of influencing politics. But when you c have a sense that what you believe needs to be done is not being done, and there's no way of influencing it, then you start wondering about democracy and democratic life. Now, some people may say, OK, the ANC is in danger of losing the Nelson Mandela metro. metro. It's also uh, marginal in one or two other uh, metros. Uh, but it may, it seems to me that for the foreseeable future, the ANC seems unlikely to lose elections. Um, sure, the DA has got a new leader, and I think it was important, significant for political life, that the differences between Wilmot James and Musi Maimani related to ideological questions. That they had a, there was a difference between uh, the vision that the two people had, how they understood liberalism, things like that. Now, you don't get that debate in the ANC at the moment. Mm. There's uh, a lot of fighting going on in Eteguini uh, municipality and uh, that region of the ANC. But it's not as to do with vision. So my belief is that we as citizens need to see politics as not being confined to periodic voting. We need to ask ourselves how we can influence events, not necessarily by marching against the ANC or uh, being a force that is anti or pro any polit particular political organization. We need to ask ourselves in the various sectors where we are working, what we can do to influence the course of events. For example, people are quite angry about Nkandla because Nkandla represents undermining of constitutionalism, it re represents patronage, the architect is the president's personal architect, uh, the president himself is benefiting. It may also involve corruption. And I think these are the sorts of issues where pe people, and, they're not, and these are not the only ones, people need to claim their constitutional rights uh, and also to claim their rights to have a role in determining the conditions of their own lives. So on that basis, I would see the lessons of earlier periods of political history 
the 1980s, popular power being necessary to augment representative democracy, periodic voting. But how does one go about now creating these vehicles for democratic life? This is something that needs to be discussed because it's one thing saying that people should set up organizations to do with poor education, let's say. Now, before you can have an organization, one or two people have to meet. Now, let's say that there's a distance between them. They have to pay to be able to meet, mm -hmm. pay for transport. If they get other people together, they have to get a venue where they can meet. And they may not have a venue. Someone's home may be big, but if it's big enough, or even if they hire a venue, if people come from different parts, where are they going to get the funds for the transport? If some people have to stay over, where are the funds for the accommodation? Where are the funds for the food? Let's say these people form an organization and they want to have a meeting. How do you advertise it? Where are the funds for posters or for uh, sending out uh, mail of in one sort or another? Do they have computers? Do they have internet? Do they have electricity? Or how does the internet work if they use emails? If they don't use emails, how do they invite other people? Do they go from uh, house to house? How do they connect with these other people? Now, if they have the meeting, again, people who've come from far, you have to provide food for them. You have to have, for example, facilities like if it's not a blackboard, maybe this paper spreadsheets that you write on, not spreadsheets, there is paper that you write with cokey chalk. You need various facilities. You need coffee, you need tea, you need transport back, which is safe, all these sorts of things. So where do they get the money from? Now, some people say NGOs. Now, NGOs have funds, but we need to ask ourselves, how are NGOs relating to grassroots organizations? Are they solving problems for them? In other words, if they are lawyers or experts of one or other type, do they go there and say, OK, this is the problem. We will sort it out and then the people have it solved. But there's a different relationship when you actually facilitate the building of organization. For example, NGOs can teach people how to run meetings. They can teach them how to keep books. They can teach them how to sell, set up organizations. They can provide funds for transport to go to these meetings or for venues. And if, for example, they need legal assistance, the lawyers can involve them in the process. For example, if it relates to the eviction of informal traders, mm -hmm. now CERI, Socioeconomic Rights Institute, directly involved the people. Their voices were heard in the applications. The Centre for Law and Society in Cape Town, when they bring action, legal action, in relation to the distribution of land or the traditional courts bill, they act together with the Association for Rural Democracy. And those people, their voices are heard in Parliament when they oppose legislation. Or they are heard through affidavits to the Constitutional Court or whatever court they go to. So we have to ask ourselves, we have to look at funding organizations. Are, who are they funding? And are they funding grassroots organizations and helping them to develop capacity? Or are they merely solving problems for them? 
because the difference between the two ways of approaching it is that the one gives people capacity to be self-empowered. And that is very important for democracy, that people at the lowest levels, uh, it may be an idea in their head to form an organization, but they can't do it without resources. And usually the people who most need it are not are beyond the reach of those who give out funds. So we need to look at how this can be done because um, there are a number of basic needs that are not being met. There are some NGOs who do connect and help grassroots organizations, but we need to encourage uh, the growth of social movements that are truly representative, not merely uh, people who uh, say yes or no. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about democracy.